They didn't say they'd be there in half an hour because they displayed turtle power. Ah. Don't miss Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hey, everyone. This is Digital Charcuterie. I'm James. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to talk Tales of the TMNT Ninja Turtles. It dropped today, August 9th, on Paramount+. Plus, If you haven't seen it and you are a turtle fan, I suggest uh, you should. I'm going to get into it. Uh, it's going to, I guess we'll call it a review. It won't really be a review. I'm just going to talk about it. Spoilers ahead. So if you have not seen it and you don't want to know what's going on, maybe don't. I'll keep it vague spoilers probably, but I will go into it. Uh, so if you don't want to know anything about it, head off now. And if you uh, don't care or if you've seen it, stop on by, hit the subscribe button, like this video, do all the fun stuff that you're supposed to do on YouTube. And if you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down. I, it, you know, fair is fair. Let's get right into it. I didn't know what to expect from this. I thought the trailers looked great. I was a big fan of Mutant Mayhem, uh, the movie from last summer. I thought I didn't think it was a, the perfect Ninja Turtle movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought the artwork was phenomenal. I thought you know the animation was great. I, the voice cast was uh, spectacular. I liked most of it. There was little things that kind of um, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. The biggest one for me in that movie was the splinter was splinter i guess basically how you know he learned ninjutsu from it was it was a funny gag but he learned it from watching movies and it was a funny gag and it worked in the movie but one thing that i love about ninja turtles is the relationship with uh between shredder and splinter and obviously shredder's not in that movie but he is he is clearly hinted at for a sequel and he's on the way you, you know like we see shredder at the end of that movie so i really you know, that's one of the things that kind of is kind of like, eh, because it's, it's such a big dynamic that I love that I think they've really failed to hit since the 90 movie. They've, I like, I think, you know, um, the two Bay movies, which I actually enjoy both those movies. I like, like, I love Ninja Turtles, but, you know, they didn't hit it well in that one either. I think, you know, in the, the 2014 movie, I think there was an opportunity there. And I think because of the reshoots and changing who Shredder was and whatnot, I think that kind of, ruin the dynamic of shredder and splinter i still don't think it would have been as strong as it could be or should be and so that was my biggest gripe with the with with the movie this show on the other hand so i didn't I, the the animation in the movie is not what they do in the show the show is more hand-drawn uh 2d animation and it translates wonderfully it looks phenomenal it's a, it a beautiful looking show i just love like every Every frame was beautiful piece of artwork. I really liked it. The, the so basically it's twelve episodes and it's two six inch or six inch. <laughs> it's a sub and it's two six episode arcs or storylines because they kind of end and they're being told through like Leonardo's eyes and through Raphael's eyes. And so when I saw that at the beginning, I was like, okay, so there's no real stakes in this now because it's not a real story, but it is. They're, they're retelling stories that have happened and they're kind of enhancing them in a way and embellishing them along the way as well. So it adds to it. And they the second half really gets into that. I did enjoy the second half, but I will say the first six episodes of this were some of my favorite Ninja Turtle storytelling ever, like in a long time. I I mean, it's on, I don't know if it's up there with some of the movies, but it's it's. I really enjoyed the first six episodes. Bishop is the villain. Um, Bishop, as we see in the trailers, the first clip that was released was of Bishop, which is actually a clip from episode six, five, five or six, whenever the episode ends, <laughs> whatever the arc is. I think it was six, but I could be wrong. But anyway, this sh what this show did was it actually separated the turtles, which I thought was going to be disappointing when I got into it. So there's an event that happens. They're all going to a, a costume party with April O'Neil. And and they get kind of sidetracked uh, to go get a mutant, and they go to uh, to uh, this bay area, and they and they get separated, and you don't know how they get separated off the bat, right? They're just Leo goes one way, and you follow Leonardo when he runs into April O'Neil, and you kind of follow their storyline. Then the next one you follow Mikey, then it's Raph and, and Donatello. And they're all separate. And at first, I thought this was it was a bummer. I'm like, but I want to watch the Ninja Turtles. I want to see them together. And each episode started the same. <clears throat> and then you saw kind of the, some of the events happen from different points of view of the turtles in their episodes. And I and, and I didn't. It didn't end up bothering me. It ended up I actually kind of liked it. Each turtle got a, a chance to kind of 
grow. And the one thing that I think they did very well, I thought, was that the there's undertones. So so it's you're following one turtle, but there's undertones of the other three turtles there, and they're kind of learning to appreciate and respect and acknowledge their brothers as it goes along. So it's kind of like, you know, Raphael's punch first, but he's like, oh, maybe I do need to, he takes Mikey's advice of kind of getting to know people, being personable, telling jokes, he kind of takes that advice. So there's things like that that I thought really worked uh, as, as along the way. And in the end, doing like the Avengers thing, and to get at the end, they all come together and and they fight and they save the day. And uh, and that's what you're there for, right? So I, they, they I, th I felt like they earned it. I felt like they, they ended up earning their keep and it ended up, they ended up earning the finale of of the two arcs that they did because they did it now they're both very similar in that respect like the turtles go they're both individual stories and the, and the turtles kind of find out who they are and who their brothers are and and other things like that throughout them so they're very similar the, the stories are different bishop is uh someone who creates ai robots that try to kill all mutants and her assistant is uh her, her well her donor is a, a rich guy and his son is voiced by Pete Davidson, who is pretty hilarious in this. And uh, and it, the, the one stipulation he has is you have to give my son a job. And so he, so this character Rod is kind of thrown in there. And his, his, he's with uh, Michelangelo, which makes the most sense. And it works out wonderfully. I thought they had a good dynamic and good relationship. And you see his character kind of grow. And he's just a bumbling idiot. And, and that's what you want him. And Pete Davidson does a great job with that. But Bishop was a great character. I hope we get more of Bishop. I don't know if you could throw Bishop in. A, I don't think it would be in a movie, but I hope we get more of these kind of episodes. I thought it was cool. Obviously, it's called Tales of the TMNT because they are tales being told of these of these characters. One of them that I liked was in the first <clears throat> half, with Donatello's point of view. He kind of relived the events of the movie with the characters he he is with, and he uh, and it's done through like eight bit Nintendo style, like old video game looking. Uh, screens with the text on the bottom and the 8 bit and all that or 16 bit maybe it is whatever and i thought that was that was pretty good but i like the way they did it. they all have their own unique spin on it and you see how they actually feel about each other and they actually are each other and they and they get to use their weapons they use their skill sets wonderfully through the all all 12 episodes but especially those first six because the first six just it's the ai robots are coming after them they're each being chased by one and then Raphael gets tangled up with the purple dragons, which was a great little thing to see. And, and Donatello's on the subway with some cops, and he's got to he's got to shut them down. And so he steals a laptop, and th the cops aren't they're not really on his side. They're not against him, but they're trying to they have this book that they want to get about mutants on the subway and whatnot. And so it's a lot of fun. The humor was wonderful in this show. The humor really kept me going because I was thinking about it, I'm like this is definitely more for kids than. Um, well, it's for kids. It's not more, not more than anything. It's just it is definitely for kids. But the humor kind of kept me going on because there are some jokes that um, there's some crude jokes, but I wouldn't say the jokes are uh, necessarily over kids' heads. But they, I think they hit like the an older demographic as well, where you can appreciate the the, the humor and laughter. And I really appreciated the, the artwork, like I said. So that kept me going, and then the jokes kept me going. And it didn't take itself too seriously. It got, I mean, it's for, like I said, it is for kids, so it can only get so dark, but it it does, it does straddle that line. Like it took me back to like older cartoons in that. And I was even, while I was watching it, I even thought, man, the, all the episodes dropped at once. This would have been great. Like I, when I was growing up, this would have been a weekly event that I would love to have watched. I would love to have sat down and seen this show every week as a kid, especially now in the summer, if they would have dropped it once a week in the summer or whatever, I think it would have been very effective. That being said, these episodes they're about two 22 minute episodes, and they're great. They're all they're fleshed out story. The characters are all fleshed out. The new characters are fleshed out. The recurring characters are fleshed out. It's nice. One thing they did spectacularly, in my opinion, was this is a straight uh, extension of the movie. Like there, it takes place two months after whatever of the movie, and then or it says two months ago or whatever, and then they they go on and the events of the movie directly impact what you're watching. In many respects, uh, Bad Bernie shows up towards the end of this as well. It's great to see Bad Bernie show up. Uh, Leatherhead, I thought, stole the the show, uh, but I, I really like Metalhead as well. I thought Metalhead was like they, the, just the way they incorporated the characters kind of organically and it all fit. And, like everything made like the way they did things, it made sense. Bebop and Rocksteady are not in it, but they get referenced quite a bit in the first half. Like I said, the first that first half. 
I was like, I just want to, I would just watch this straight through. I just thought Bishop was great. I thought the voice of Bishop was also wonderful. Character designs on everyone was just out of this world. Like, I just was all in on this. Uh, I'm not going to compare it to any other Ninja Turtle uh, animated shows that I watched growing up because the 80s Ninja Turtles is one that I grew up with. And is it better than that? It probably is, but nostalgia, it wouldn't be. Um, there is a nice Star Wars reference that Donatello has in his episode in the second half of the season uh, where they mentioned the trash compartment. It was just, it was a great little game because Donatello's into Star Trek and Star Wars and all that, and that was great to see. It was really nice to get more of these personalities, and they really played on they played on the ninja stuff a bit, but they really, really, really play on them being teenagers. And this is I was watching it thinking, obviously the movie, but this was the first time that you know you'd watch these things and you'd really be like oh yeah they're kids they're kids it's not just because their voices it's because of the characters themselves they really i thought they really hit the nail on the head with them being you know 15 16 years old i know it's supposed to be 15 but i don't know the time has passed since the movie who knows but they really i thought they really did a good job of making you understand and appreciate how old they were that they were just kids and so they're in situations where they're kind of where they're mature but then the immaturity kind of kicks in and, and their insecurities are there as well. And they really played up. And I thought it was really good. And they the, they did a great job, a really great job of differentiating all the characters um, based on how you know them and you love them. I don't know how to describe it except that you really – like because in Rise of the of the TMNT, they wanted Raphael to be the leader. And this one, they, there there's moments of Raphael doing stuff. And I, and I think it's Mikey who's like, this is why you can't be the leader. You know, or he has a plan and the plan's like just punch them and Michelangelo's like this is why you can't be the leader so they kind of they understand the dynamic of these characters and why they are in the positions that they are in uh th my biggest negative of this is very similar to the the movie i suppose but it's splinter splinter plays a minor role in the first six episodes and he he he, he he's only speaking in rodent which I wasn't too crazy. It was like, oh, so I guess they don't want Jackie Chan back. They didn't want to pay Jackie Chan. Then the second half, they have, um, so the second half, they're doing a, an assignment for April O'Neil. And so it's her and Donnie, and they're being too nitpicky with it. So Raphael's like, we got to embellish it. So he slides in, and he decides to voice Splinter as Batman. And it was funny for a second. And then every time Splinter was on the screen talking, I was like, I got taken. I got very much, I did get very much taken out of it because it just felt like they were too cheap to get Jackie Chan to do the voice of Splinter or a Jackie Chan impersonation impression would have been great. I, I just, it was, it was the Raph voice doing Batman for a lot of that second half. I wasn't crazy about it. There was a joke about how when Splinter talks to Raphael, it's Raphael talking to Raphael which was kind of funny. But again, I, that wasn't something I wasn't on board with that. that. That's my biggest gripe with it is I just wasn't on board with that. And I think that's why I didn't enjoy the second half as much as the first half, as weird as that sounds. <clears throat> the second half does some great stuff. I really like the villains. It's uh, Lee, uh, Sally, is a seahorse Sally. Uh, Lee is an eel. And then Goldfin, the goldfish, who becomes Badfin. And uh, they were... I really enjoyed them. I like their, like, again, their character designs were great, but I thought the characters were funny as well. And they were mutants, and they get mutated into mutants because of the events of the movie. And even Bishop's character, Bishop becomes Bishop because of the events of the first, of the first, of the movie, of the uh, Mutant Mayhem movie. That's why she decides that she's trying to do, use her AI technology for good. And then uh, Rod is like, no, nah, man, you got to make them fight mutants, blah, blah. And she's like, no. And then her, uh, warehouse gets destroyed and she has a second thought on it and decides hey you know what you know what yeah okay let's do it and she does it and the, i thought the i thought the megazoids were great i thought they look cool i like the idea that they can't really be shut down and the way they to get they get around it to shut them down i think worked and then i love the little ps they leave with bishop at the end where they're like we're gonna need your help and she's like okay i'm in uh, so she's gonna be back and i hope we get more of these animated ninja turtle shows because the movie's not coming out till like 2026 i think the sequel it's like taking a while right it's gonna be a long time away maybe 2025 i could be wrong but still a ways away if they can churn out more of these that would be great uh to keep the ninja turtle fuel uh burn fire burning fuel on the fire the thing burning let me see more of it i can't wait to get to shredder we didn't need it bebop and rocksteady again don't know where they are would love to see 
of a Conan. Now, Genghis Frog is actually really funny in this. Uh, uh, Filet, Ray Filet is, uh, I don't know how much Post Malone got paid for that, but kudos to him for taking that. I, but I, Genghis Frog had it made me, uh, Genghis Frog was, has, has his moments in there too. But again, I was really, like the Purple Dragons, I was really excited to see. And I, it made me really hope to see some Casey Jones action coming up. We don't get any Casey Jones. Still probably saving him for the movie. Maybe not. Maybe there is no Casey Jones. I don't know. But I like I said, I really enjoyed this. The first six episodes were so solid. I thought, you know, like I said, separating the turtles, I thought it was going to be a down point, but it ended up being very strong. It worked out so well. Because they're never, the episodes are never fully alone. Like it always starts, we're together, and then you, so you get that kind of sense, and and then yeah, and the second the second half was good because it's about uh, the three new mutants that I mentioned, Sally Lee and <clears throat> Goldfin. They're shunned because they became mutants, so nobody that from their home wants to be be near them or know anything about them ever again. And so what they do is it, they come up on Earth, they learn how to speak English, blah blah blah, and then they find out that the the pearl that was keeping their whole household in this in the ocean. Um, in the water safe is at the New York Museum. And so they they just, they hatch a plan to go get that. And then Goldfin turns on them. And there's a whole thing there. So Goldfin theoretically would be back if this show was a hit. I have no idea. It just dropped. But I'm going to wrap it up. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. First six episodes I thought were great storytelling. Second half was still very good. And it was uh, very enjoyable. Uh, what did you guys think? Do you guys like it? Did you dislike it? Did you like the movie? If you like the movie, I think you'll like this. It's very similar in tone and obviously style, and it was a it was a good time, and I was glad to I was glad to have some Ninja Turtle action in my uh, on my TV screen once again after all this time. It's been six it's been a year actually. I think the movie came out like a year ago, so it's been a while. Good to see, lots of fun. They've nailed the voice cast. I cannot wait to hear who they get to voice Shredder and some other characters coming up in the future because they've absolutely nailed everything thus far. And again, look at the anim like this. These characters just look great. But I am curious who prescribed Donnie's glasses? Who prescribed his glasses? All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a like and subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe. The studio that brought you TMNT Mutant Mayhem. All mutants must be destroyed.